if you're going to offer me a product and compromise on quality and safety, I'm sorry. I'm not a huge fan of Renault's product, but I have a couple of things to say about this one. Welcome to my in-depth review of the Renault Kiga. This is Cast24. Welcome to this channel and welcome to another video. There are three trim levels to this Renault Kiga. There is a Life, a Zen, which is basically a Life Plus, and then there is this range topping Intense, which is the one you are watching right now. This top of the range Intense comes with a bunch of standard features like this nice 16 inch alloy wheels, LED headlights, wireless app connect, artificial leather wrap around the steering wheel, and an upgraded sound system. There are two engine choices to choose from. There's a 1 liter 3 cylinder naturally aspirated engine which produces 52 kilowatts of power and 96 newton meters of torque. This engine is available in both manual and automatic transmission. The other engine choice is a 1 liter 3 cylinder turbocharged engine which produces 74 kilowatts of power and 116 newton meters of torque. In front, you have these daytime running lights and fog lamp at the bottom. In terms of design, this front end is bold and in your face, and I can give it a 4.5 over 5. If it wasn't for that diamond Renault sign, I would have given it a 5 over 5. Moving on to this side profile, I like the design of these 16 alloys and running above them are these plastic cladding which seem to be a mark of a crossover SUV these days. The black contrast roof and the roof rail give this car a stunning side profile and I like its design. The back of this car has a sporty design with a nice roof spoiler, C-shaped LED tail lamps, and parking sensors at the bottom. And overall, I think you can predict what I'm gonna say about it. Moving on to the interior, on the driver's door, there is a nicely laid out window control sensors, and there is an average size door pin. First off, I really like the design of this interior. I think Renault put some effort in designing this. Quality-wise, I'm not so impressed. There is a lot of cheap plastic material around here, and even the sound of your door when it closes. I'm showing I went to Kube Kibelama Techs, Yatal. That's even worse. You have a nicely designed multifunction steering wheel and a cool-looking digital driver display screen. This 8-inch touchscreen allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wireless or via USB cable. I wonder why the shortcut buttons are away from the driver. Hi. Anyways, let's move on. You have your climate control centers, a USB port, and stop-stop ignition button. If you look down, there is a 12-volt socket. This car has a manual gear and next to it, there is a button to select your drive mode. There is an old-fashioned handbrake and you can put your mobile phone on top of this retractable tray with some extra storage underneath it. This car has a nice comfortable armrest and you have some extra storage underneath this. Continuing with this practicality theme, there's also a well compartmentalized storage glove box, as you can see. There's no mirror here, which should come standard, and Nangazuri not to be coming on team Amalzoibuaranjan. There's also no storage area for your sunglasses, should us bang in with this car. There isn't much adjustment to the steering wheel, as you can see.
Now let's move on to the back. In my driving position, knee room is just okay. Leg room is just average. There is a storage area behind both front seats and you have two rear air vents and a 12 volt socket. There is also an armrest with two cup holders. And if you have a child, there are also fixed anchor points at the back for your child's seats. There is a 60-40 split for your rear seats and it's very easy to fold them, as you can see. In terms of boot space, you have 405 liters of space with rear seats in place. You can also fold the rear seats to increase the boot space. Underneath, there is a false floor which houses your spare wheel. Now with all the nice stuff out of the way, let's now talk numbers. You can get the base model Renault Kiga for around 204000 which is a similar starting price as the Hyundai Grand i10. But this model here, because it's a top of the range 1 litre Intel turbo, it will cost you around 285000 If you are looking to finance a 285000 car with no deposit over a period of 60 months, as a current prime lending rate of 8.25%, with no balloon payment, you'll be paying around 5906 per month. And if you add 1500 for insurance and 1500 for petrol, you are around 8900 which is basically 9000 And 9000 for a Renault Kiga, I'll say it's not worth it, but it's your decision. The Renault Kiga comes with a two-year 30,000 km service plan for non-turbo engine, and 3 year 45,000 km service plan for turbo engines. And their service interval are every 15,000 km. This car also have a 5 year 150,000 km mechanical warranty and a 6 year anti corrosive warranty. This car was a special request from Specific and Job. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more car reviews like this.